All right, time to talk about the space race. The space race is going to begin in 1957 with the Soviets launching Sputnik. We'll talk about that on the next slide. Uh, this is going to be the race between the USSR and the United States for scientific superiority. The belief is that the best country is going to win the space race. It's kind of a way of one-upping one another, and thus each country wants to win this race. So after the Soviets are going to launch Sputnik in 1957, the United States is going to respond on July 29th of 1958, forming NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Then, just a few short years later, JFK is going to be giving a speech when he says, we do things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. He is talking about getting a man to the moon by the end of the decade. Now, this is incredibly important to understand is at this time period, the United States had nowhere near the technology to get a human off of Earth and land them onto moon and then, the moon and then get them back to Earth. Kennedy makes this promise and it's really going to launch the American desire and that race for the moon. Now, the race for the moon was between the United States and the USSR trying to be the first country to get a man to the moon. The United States um, admits to this race because Kennedy said it was going to happen. They're publicly all in for this one. The USSR is going to deny actually being in this race. However, they are trying to get to the moon as well. They're going to abandon their program though shortly after the United States lands Apollo 11 on the moon, and that's gonna be kind of the end of the space race. The United States is ultimately going to win this race to space, the race to the moon. The Soviets were the first one to get a man in space. The Americans said, we can one up yet. We're gonna be the first to get a man to the moon. Now, gotta talk about the big events in the space race. First and foremost is the launch of Sputnik, October of 1957. Sputnik was the first artificial satellite to go into orbit. This is kind of when the Soviets officially are like, hey, look what we can do. This worries the Americans because they are seeing the Soviets as superior in science and technology, something the Americans do not want to have. They're gonna respond by forming NASA shortly after this. Sputnik, as I already said, is the first satellite in space made by the Soviets, and it's going to show the advancement of the Soviet system. It shows that the USSR has more science, more technology, and better scientists um, and engineers than the United States. As you can imagine, the US is not real fond of this. They are going to want to get even with the Soviets. Now, there's gonna be the question of can humans actually survive in space? Is it even possible to send a human into space or are they going to die? So what's going to happen is the Soviets are going to go find this stray dog running around Moscow, okay? Like he, like he, right through here. And this is going to be the first animal to orbit Earth. They're going to take her, put her in this harness, put a little camera in there, put her in a rocket, and launch her up to space. Now, tragically, this was a one-way ticket. They simply wanted to see what would happen to a live animal in orbit, okay? Would they survive or would they die? Unfortunately, she is going to overheat and die, um, but they realize that you can actually survive in outer space. Then, in April of 1961, the Soviets are going to respond by sending Yuri Gagarin as the first man in space. He's going to be going up, come back a hero. Uh, and this is really going to put the pressure on the Americans. The Soviets have now sent a human being into space. The Americans have yet to do so. What's the next move for the Americans? We're going to find out in the next set of notes. Questions, comments, put them down below. Otherwise, good luck.